టు గోండ్వానా యూనివర్సిటీ గడ్చిరులి చింతామణి కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ కామర్స్ అండ్ మహిళా మహావిద్యాలయ అమరావతి ఆల్సో చింతామణి కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ సైన్స్ పొంభూర్ణ చింతామణి మహావిద్యాలయ పొంభూర్ణ చింతామణి కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్ట్స్ అండ్ సైన్స్ గోండ్పిపురి అండ్ అండ్ చింతామణి మహావిద్యాలయ భుగూస్ ఆర్గనైజ్డ్ టూ డేస్ ఇంటర్ డిసిప్లినరీ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ ఈ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు రన్ ది పేపర్ ప్రెజెంటేషన్స్ విచ్ రిమెయిన్ డ్యూ టు ద టెక్నికల్ ఎరర్ సో ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు పార్టిస్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు రిక్వెస్ట్ యూ పార్టిసిపేట్ in this session and ask your queries to the respective person please share the details with others those who want to repeat their presentation can mail me till 5 minutes after that i will not get any considered get considered that details thank you very much now we are going to start the presentation session I don't know schools and colleges have been shut since mid-March due to COVID-19 pandemic. Teachers were struggling to take online classes during lockdown period without the knowledge of SOP. wait for a minute students attitude towards online classes during covid-19 pandemic with special reference to ug students of bangalore university as you all know schools and colleges have been shut since mid march due to covid-19 pandemic teachers were struggling to take online classes during lockdown period without the knowledge of and so how to use the different online platforms students were also facing problems like internet connectivity non availability of smartphones and the sharing of one mobile by the many members of the family 
in the beginning of the lockdown period, for the first two weeks, students also enjoyed the holidays, uh, holidays, but later they also started getting frustrated with the uncertainty of the situation. Objectives of my study, first one, to study the attitude of students towards online classes. Secondly, to examine the effectiveness of online classes. Thirdly, to evaluate the problems faced by them. And finally, to identify the level of preparedness of the students for online classes in future. I have used methodology as primary data and secondary data. Primary data, I have prepared a structured questionnaire in the Google form and shared the link to 100 students of five different colleges. The number of respondents attended online classes during lockdown was 70% and 30% of the respondents have not attended the online classes. 48% of the respondents have used WhatsApp as their online platform and they rated the satisfaction level 42% as satisfied and 38% as dissatisfied with the online class. And 38% of the respondents consider the online classes are enriched with the multimedia. And 36% of the respondents rated the network connectivity during online classes as average and 32% as poor. Only 2% of them have responded as excellent. The satisfaction level was the effectiveness of teacher in handling the online classes. 56% of the respondents ranked as satisfied. 54% of the respondents rated as moderate for the understanding level of the subject during online classes. And 70% of the respondents did not agree or accept the online classes as a substitute for offline classes. Um, I would like to suggest, uh, first of all, for the teachers that they can uh, prepare the videos and the recorded videos can be sent to the students so that the students can watch those videos uh, at their uh, convenient time. And those videos, it's better to have a shorter period of three to five minutes. And students, for the students also, I suggest that they should be committed and they should be dedicated and motivated to learn themselves. They should complete the online assignments, quizzes, and other activities by the deadline and in the same format specified by the teachers. And one more suggestion is that there's a need to prepare a set timetable uh, if the online classes are continued in future. To conclude, that there was a negative as well as positive attitude of students uh, by, uh, for the, towards the online classes and uh, the negative, uh, these uh, positive or uh, negative attitudes depends on how effectively the teachers handle the classes. And to train, uh, there's a need for the training of the teachers to take how to take the online classes. Attempts have been made by the various colleges and the different universities and MHRD, various webinars, conferences, and online faculty development programs have been conducted to train the teachers as to how to take the online classes and how to make use of different online platforms. Multi-pronged strategy is necessary to manage the crisis and build a resilient Indian education system in the long run. Thank you. Hi friends, myself, Dr. Nagesh Senigarapu, Assistant Professor, DTSS College of Commerce, Mumbai. Here today to present my research article titled, Is e-learning feasible in India? Now, as all of us know, 
In the second week of March 2020, most of the state governments across the country instructed schools and colleges to shut down temporarily to stop the spread of COVID-19 virus. Now, this is the period between March to June, which is the period of examination, admission process, and entrance test for different universities and competitive examination. The closure of educational institutions affected the teaching and assessment methodology. So what happened? Most of the management and administration told the staff members to keep the classes going. So educational institutions are focusing on e-learning methods, mostly in the form of video conferencing tool. This increased the workload of teaching staff as well as other administration staff and they tried to keep the students busy through online teaching learning, basically lectures being conducted through video conferencing tools. Now, if we take a look at the review from different countries, it shows that e-learning has somewhat better results if used properly in a blended way and with proper technological design, which is learner-centered and with available digital infrastructure. Now we have to consider this in Indian context, considering different factors to arrive at any significant policy shift if the policymakers are thinking to make it as a long-term perspective. Objectives of the study. The basic aim of the study is to examine the feasibility of the online teaching learning in India. It also compares the classroom versus online teaching and learning regarding the comprehensive purpose of education and tries to explore the combination of e-learning tools which could be considered with the conditions of digital accessibility to the masses. The methodology basically is I have compiled the data from different secondary sources, reports from MHRD, reports from individual articles, reports from UNESCO, etc. The purpose of this study is to provide basis for empirical further research. Now, if we take a look at the e-learning, the most popular e-learning methodology has been MOOCs, that is Massive Open Online Courses. Now, these courses up for a variety of programs and are available in India on Swayam. The cost is very little. It is convenient and flexible in the form of anytime, anywhere and anyone can learn. It is learner-friendly learning management system, availability of pre-recorded video lectures which can be rewind and in again and again by the student to help the understanding. It helps them to improve in technical skills and most importantly, it is self-paced learning. So these features make it most appealing for massive open online courses, which have contributed to the popularity of this across the globe. Now, if we take a look at the classroom teaching, the advantages which it possesses different from online mode, it helps in collaborative learning, group learning. Basically, a group comprises of different kinds of learners and the slow learners can learn from their peers and how they are learning, they can observe it and they also can improve their learning mechanism off and in the class. It helps them to improve social skills of communication, etc. It develops critical thinking skills based on observation and other things. They are not learning in isolation, so their observation skills are better. It helps the learner to be always stimulated. Teacher can take different measures to keep the learner stimulated. They can change their teaching methodology. They can give different kind of examples. It is instantaneous as the teacher is able to observe whether the students are following or not. Now, in case of classroom teaching, the chance of dummy feedback is very little. But in case of online teaching, dummy feedback is a big concern at present. Immediate feedback can be garnered by the teacher in the classroom by asking questions to a particular student or giving them a group activity. So it helps them to build their personality skills which are helpful for them in career building also. In classroom teaching, the teaching can be combined with different extracurricular activities also which help them to build their different skills which are required for their further career. So classroom teaching do possess some different skills which are not there in online teaching. Now, 
the basic purpose of the study is to find out whether it is feasible at present with the kind of in digital infrastructure which india possess to go for e learning or basically online learning and teaching mode now these are the statistics which we have derived from telecom statistics india 2018 and 2019 which is released by department of telecommunication government of india if we look at the tele density in rural area in 2018 tele density was 59.25 percent per 100 inhabitants which declined to 57.50 same is the case in urban it declined from 166.64 Per hundred inhabitants to one fifty nine point six six per hundred inhabitants. Number of mobile phone subscribers in crores also declined in rural and urban both. Internet subscribers in crores also has shown little bit of increase. Now number of mobile phone subscribers in crores declined, but number of internet subscribers in crores has increased. It may be on account of urban area where. Per hundred inhabitants, the tele density is very high. That means a person is having more than one telephone or mobile phone in generally. So both those mobile phones will have different internet subscription. Internet subscribers in India per hundred inhabitants also shows that there is not that much of penetration in rural India. It was 16.41 per hundred inhabitants in 2018. Which rose to 25.36 per hundred inhabitants in 2019. Now let us look at some look at some other statistics. IC report that is All India Survey on Higher Education shows that nearly 79.8 percent of the total registered learners in higher education are in undergraduate courses. Majority of them are in the age group of 18 to 23. Now UNESCO says that 43% of the learners across don't have computer access. Telecom statistics says that 41% urban household has internet connectivity and 28% are the rural households have internet connectivity. So with such pathetic internet connectivity and mobile phone possession it is really difficult to envisage that the online learning will provide equity and access and will comprehensively cover the masses for education the telecom statistics individual internet connectivity data further makes it very bleak or stark picture andhra has just 2% households which have internet connection individually and in west bengal and bihar the situation is very very pathetic at just a half percent Now McKinsey Global Institute's report shows that in India in 2019 only 26.2 persons had smartphone per 100 person that means nearly 74 persons did not have smartphone the monthly data usage was 8.3 gb per month now if we go for online learning the data usage has to be almost triple of this so the affordability factor also comes into picture The Statista survey shows that only 18% were internet users in the age group of 16 to 19 years, which is basically the composition of these undergraduate students. So it shows that undergraduate students, although it looks that has internet connection, they are using internet vastly, but the internet usage in this group was just restricted to 18%. now in house survey which was done in delhi university and hyderabad university showed that 40% of the student were not able to get access to the online classes which were conducted and 30% of them complained about the cost of the data and the cost made it impossible for them to access to these online classes regularly now with such low access to internet mobile users and data usage capacity the effort of the administration to pass on the significant cost of deriving and delivering the education to masses will only eliminate the most vulnerable such as girls scheduled caste scheduled tribe other backward classes and lower income class both in rural and urban area so the whole hearted effort should be at to 
and we say such an approach which would be a blended way of learning in the long term such as MOOCs could be made optional but not compulsory way of learning and the traditional way of learning with smart board and other technological advancement to retain the attention of the student should be encouraged more. So more investment in higher education with elementary education is advised for. Thank you. There is a technical problem. We will start our session within two minutes. Hello everyone, my name is Nananja Singh. I am going to present a paper titled Metamaterial Based Triangular Electromagnetic Multiresonant Antenna. Now, as the name of the paper comprises of the two things that is, metamaterial and the TER, Triangular Electromagnetic Resonator, shall be discussing about them first. The metamaterials are the basically artificial materials which are composite human made materials that have properties that are not found in natural materials we derive their we derive the properties from exactly designed structure and they are made of periodically array of metallic resonant elements the properties are meta materials electric permeability epsilon and magnetic permeability mu both are negative as a result refractive index also becomes negative here are some other properties of the meta materials like this a structure used the meta material synthesis srrs metal wire wire lines csrrs and slotted lines and the classification of the meta materials these are the based on the dielectric and magnetic properties and it is a consist of the right handed and left handed TL, a dual resonant inclusion resonant a two non harmonic frequencies this is the layout of proposed crlh inclusion and here is the log diagram permeability condition and here is the coaxial field coaxial field or probe lead is a very common technique used for feeding microstrip patch antenna. The main advantage of this type of feeding is scheme is that the feed can be placed at any desired location inside the patch or outside the, inside the patch in order to match the within inputs of impedance. This method is easy to fabricate 
and also has low suspicious radiation. Now, in this paper, we have designed two antennas, one with TER, triangular electromagnetic resonant natter load, and other is complementary triangular electromagnetic resonant natter, CTER load, and using HFSS, and have compared the result with a base paper titled Electrically Small Meta Material Inspired to Band Antenna with Meta Mode. And after the simulation, and after the simulation, antenna on the resonant frequency is 2.15, and 6.51 gigahertz, and also has the bidirectional radiation pattern. Also has the bidirectional radiation pattern. And the proposed meta material antenna has the advantage of simple fabrication miniature and compactness between which can be applied to hyperlane and 4g mobile wireless communication system and here is the dimensions of the simulated antenna symmetric diagram of antenna 2 with ter and ctr loading by hfss and here is the s11 antenna of 2 and now the comparison of the base paper result and simulated result. Here is the simulated design and proposed antennas plot and here is the E-plane radiation pattern of proposed antenna and now H-plane radiation pattern of proposed antenna HFSS. The real part and imaginary part of the impedance of proposed antenna and here is the performance of proposed antenna designed with metamaterial inclusion and these are the references here we have been taken and now thank you thank you so much one presentation has a very large complication so we are playing it from whatsapp wave the presentation is given by Dr. Shobha Gaikwad, SNDT University, number 32. Just wait for a minute. Today I'm going to do a, going to do a paper presentation on for the International Interdisciplinary E Conference. I said Dr. Shobha Gaikwad, Assistant Professor at the College of Nursing, SNDT Women's University, Mumbai. The title of my topic is Perception of School Teachers and Use of Technology During COVID-19. As we all know, now is the time of staying in the house, so online education has become the need of ask for teachers. The outbreak of COVID-19 has caused concerns globally to use technology which is the strongest factor from work from home. Many schools and colleges are showing support to increase the levels of technology in the classroom by providing hardware such as tablets and computers. There are a lot of challenges and there are a lot of strategies also the teachers are using. Teachers are considered a pillar or a backbone for improving the student learning and creating interesting teaching learning environment. The research question here are, what are the problems faced by teachers in technology and what are the strategies used to encounter the problem? The purpose of the studies, as we can see in the diagram, every one of us signs the same books nowadays on technology, trying to see it without face-to-face, -face, trying to interact to a number of devices, and at the same time, trying to learn newer and newer technologies daily, either to Skype, either to Facebook, and live streaming, and all that is what the teachers have to learn. The operational definition here was done of problems and strategies. 
research design was quantitative, target population was all teachers, sample size was 350, school teachers from Mumbai was a sample, sampling technique was non-probability convenience, the tool was given via Google form that is semi-structured questionnaire was the tool. As you see in the findings, if you can see 43% were in the age group of 26 to 35 and 21% were in 36 to 45. When we see the males and female ratio, males were only 6%, 94% gender was female. Binding of the study, you can see as per the education, the D8 students were only 40, 13 D8 qualification and maximum were the B8 that is 66%. Distribution of sample with regard to the years of experience as you see in the diagram, only 6 one to 1 year was 24%, maximum were in between 6 to 10 years median range that is 33% and then 15 years and above again a lot of experience was seen in 30% age group. What are the challenges existing in education? Low standards of education at the entry level was for 54%. Difficulty in understanding or complementing theory with practice was 67%. 72% said that they were finding difficulty in utilizing technology and changing of education was the other factor. What are the challenges faced in relation to students? Language difficulty was encountered by 54%. 87% said that difficulty to cope with the complex curriculum and lack of teaching student-centered learning was seen in 42%. What are the strategies required to overcome the challenges in education? As we see, there are wide strategies which are seen in the form of mentorship, flexible learning opportunities, advanced technology use, good learning environment. So you can see maximum was good learning requirement. That was what was 88%. What are the challenges encountered in teaching learning situation? If you see 72% said that integrating the IT, what they have learned is very difficult in online teaching. If you see education with this, it was 45%. Lack of teachers learning resources or the IT resources, having internet connection was faced by 38%. And many of them felt that applying it into the daily research was 74% and shortage of faculty was 52%. What are the strategies required for effective teaching learning practice? Reflective practice is what most of them said, that is 58%. Then you again see 89% said that applying the skill to the theory was very difficult. Then if you see 80% again had effective clinical upgradation what was what was the problem, what was found. What are the strategies related to personal attribute of teachers? 97% said that through online communication skill was what was the strategy they had to improve. Positive attitude was seen in 76%. Critical thinking is required when you're taking IT, that's 84%. And then if you see self-activation or motivation was, was required in 62%. Comparison of knowledge with age, it was seen the level of knowledge in the subject up to 30 years was greater than that of the subject 31 and above. That is youngsters are much more adapted to information technology. Comparison of knowledge with education, M8 had better knowledge than the D8 teachers, definitely because higher the education, better the knowledge. Conclusion, the binding of the studies in the current scenario do not show any integration of technology in education. The use of computers and software management has to be enhanced as an evaluation tool. Technology cannot enhance the performance of teachers and entire education system if it is taught online for them daily and upgrading is done. And then teachers need to be able to appreciate and learn the new technology. With this, I come to an end of the study. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now we move on the VLC player for next PowerPoint presentation. Hmm. 
myself sanjeev kumar mpl scholar dr c v raman university bilaspur presentation on role of digital education system during and post covid 19 introduction the vitrifying and self impact of covid 19 has shaken the world to its core core second points government around the world have temporarily closed educational institution in an attempt to contain the spread of the covid 19 number 3 in india to the government has a part of nationwide lockdown has closed all education institution as the consequences of which uh, which learners ran uh, ranging from school going children to post graduate students are affected india the largest education system in world number 1 the country has more than 1.4 million schools number 2 our 227 million students enroll in and number 3 more than 36000 higher education institutes number 4 india has one of the largest higher education system in the world Uh, promotion of e-learning nationwide closures are impacting our 91% of the world's students population a complete revolution in the way we learn today has been brought about of technology e students get in contact with the world class education which is not easy to impact by the traditional white chalk white chalk and blackboard methods of teaching Uh, online distant learning program give a great opportunity to enable high quality learning with the help of internet connectivity uh, challenging in digital learning Dig digital learning has many advantages in itself like digital learning has no physical boundaries it has more learning engagement experience rather than the traditional learning it is also cost effective and students get to learn in the confines of their comfort zone global online education has made with some success in the case of india we still have a long way to go before digital learning is seen as mainstream education because students students live in urban areas have the facility to uh, uh, option uh, for digital education however rural, uh, rural area students do not have the required infrastructure nor a financially strong to able the resources required for digital education conclusions due to the outbreak of the covid-19 the world from home wfh culture in booming in india not only education institution institutes in india have opted for an online platform like zoom app whatsapp to stay connected with the students who are learning from their homes covid-19 outbreak has boosted the e-learning process abruptly in india hi friends myself dr nagesh senigarapu assistant professor dtss college of commerce mumbai here today to present my research article titled is e-learning feasible in india again the technical error has occurred for the presentation number 99 since first day we are trying to play it from the internet directly
Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Shubhanshi Goyal from Amity University, Noida, and I'm pursuing Master's in English Literature. And my research topic is impact of COVID-19 on skills and abilities. I have deeply speculated on this topic, and here I come, and I want to share it with you all. So where we come on the topic Shivanshi Goyal from Amity University, Noida, and I am pursuing Master's in English Literature. And my research topic is impact of COVID-19 on skills and abilities. I have deeply speculated on this topic, and here I come, and I want to share it with you all. So where we come on the topic of skills and abilities, and as we all know, that each and every individual on this earth possess some skill and ability, and all are distinctive from the other person. And, but when not put into practical use, we tend to lose those skills and abilities because they require regular practice and uh, they have to be used into, uh, they have to be used into practical terms. Otherwise we tend to, uh, we tend to degrade their quality and we tend to lose our skills and abilities. So even I have speculated my life in this, uh, in these months of uh, this pandemic, and I found that uh, the skills and abilities which I possessed a few months back, I am lacking in them. You know, I'm not able to work with full efficiency because I'm lacking the resources, I'm lacking money to uh, to use them or to put them into practical use. So uh, I think this problem is being faced by each and every individual, be it a small kid, be it any uh, adolescent person, or be it an, any adult person. So everyone is facing the same problem because starting right from a younger age to adult age, every single person is, uh, has, has some or the other skill. So when we start from uh, right from the small kids, which parents used to take them to school before this pandemic had arrived. So as we can remember that uh, their teachers had put control over them. They used to teach them good manners, new norms, policies, and um, you know new forms of living and you know adapting into into the working environment and being collaborative with their uh, with their. Uh, teammates and with your friends in the class. So now all this is lacking. Children don't know what sort of environment is required to study. Even if their parents make them sit inside a room and they make them study, they are not able to study with their full efficiency because that environment is lacking, that ambience is lacking, then ultimately, you know, uh, they, they are lacking that enthusiasm, that valor with which they used to study before. So, uh, this was the case which we have seen in case of kids. They are, big, they are getting dull and as we all know that uh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So that is what is happening with our kids. And when we come to a little uh, elder age or you may say adolescent people, then we can say they are just longing to go out and, you know, uh, hang around with your friends to refresh themselves, but they are unable to do so. And because of, the, because of this, they are unable to get refreshed. So they are not able to work from their home, uh, be any assignments are given. So actually, all we can see is we are not able to put in our heart. And uh, we, we are just copying assignments from here and there, just opening net, and just for the sake of uh, beholding a degree, we are just uh, you know, we are not giving a hundred percent and just making assignment for the sake of making and we are not gaining anything from it. So uh, ultimately, you know, our power to think, our ability to think and create thoughts and thus uh, contribute to creativity has reduced to a large level, to an enormous level rather I would say. This is all because we are losing in our skills now. Uh, because we are not getting that perfect ambience, that environment in which we used to work earlier. 
Now, when coming to a little broader perspective of job doing people, then we can say that these job people, uh, job doing people, are facing enormous amount of uh, problems in their lives because every day from eight to uh, ten hours they have to work online as uh, government has ordered work from home and they can't physically go to their working places and they have to uh, relate themselves on online modes. So. Uh, it's very difficult to actually sit in front of mobile screens and laptop screens for such long hours and then talk uh, and then continuously collaborate with your teammates, with your bosses and with their professors and uh, every other uh, person belonging to their respective jobs. So this is one of the difficult tasks. So it, it is in a way a great loss to their, uh, you know, um, it can even lead to mental sickness because they are not able to take out time for themselves. They are not able to go out and have a walk. So uh, the things which would, they would have otherwise utilized with their skills and abilities. So everything is lacking in that. So uh, these were the uh, these were the routines which I told you about the kids mm -hmm. and then the adolescent people who were going to colleges and then we came to the job. Uh, doing people. So these were the three phases of individuals which I have discussed and how uh, they are facing in uh, putting their skills and abilities into practical use. However, uh, uh, I have taken, I have just recorded a few statements. So many have started to believe that the past has truly passed and that many of the ways leaders think about and run their businesses will not go back to normal. And that is a good thing. The pandemic has forced firms to adopt more productive ways of operating and accelerate productivity programs already in motion. So uh, uh, the things which I told in the starting were how we are losing our skills and abilities and how they are being deeply affected. Similarly, one more uh, one more advantage, apart from all the bad effects, the advantage which we can see is people are coming up with their new productive ways, new inventions and new innovations in the marketplace and in the business place. Uh, they are coming up with new inventions. They're using their creativity. So in a way, new skills are coming up, which people might have not realize within themselves because you know situations ultimately force us to create something new to fight for our own living so uh, this is one benefit that we can see in present pandemic that new innovations new uh, inventions are coming and people are coming up with new skills and abilities uh, which which may prove new creative and profitable in the longer run so thank you नमस्कार मी प्राध्यापक डॉक्टर दिलीप खोसे शिवशक्ती कला वाणिज्य महाविद्यालय बाबूगाव जिल्हा यवतमाळ संत गाडगे बाबा अमरावती विद्यापीठ अमरावती या कॉन्फरन्स मध्ये मी माझा पेपर लिहिला आहे जो शोध प्रबंध आहे या शोध प्रबंधाचं नाव आहे लॉकडाऊनच्या काळात आणि लॉकडाऊन नंतर सूक्ष्म लघु आणि मध्यम उद्योगांसमोरील आव्हाने आणि उपाययोजना प्रत्येक देशाची अर्थव्यवस्था ही त्या देशामध्ये उपलब्ध संसाधने उद्योग आणि बाजारपेठ या तीन गोष्टींवर अवलंबून असते आपल्या देशामध्ये सुद्धा स्वातंत्र्य प्राप्तीनंतर जो विकास सुरू झाला त्यामध्ये पंचवार्षिक योजनांच्या माध्यमाने उद्योगांवर भर देण्यात आला आणि या ताच एक भाग म्हणजे लघु आणि कुटीर उद्योगाची स्थापना झाली या लघु आणि कुटीर उद्योगाचा उद्देश हाच होता की खेड्यामध्ये जी ग्रामीण जनता आहे जास्तीत जास्त भाग आपला खेड्यावर आहे त्या भागामध्ये हे उद्योग स्थापन व्हावे आणि मग तिथे रोजगार मिळावा देशाच्या उत्पादक याच्यामध्ये अर्थव्यवस्थेमध्ये वाढ व्हावी जी डी पीमध्ये वाढ व्हावी या उद्देशाने हे उद्योग स्थापन झाले परंतु एकोणीसशे एक्क्याण्णव मध्ये जागतिक जागतिकीकरणावर आपण सही केली जागतिकीकरणाचं धोरण स्वीकारलं त्याचा परिणाम काय झाला 
की मोठ्या उद्योगाशी स्पर्धा करताना लघु आणि कुटीर उद्योगांची दमछाक होऊ लागली हे उद्योग बंद पडू लागले कारण नवीन तंत्रज्ञानाचा अभाव आणि वस्तूच्या किमती जास्त असल्यामुळे राक्षसी उद्योगांच्या स्पर्धेमध्ये हे उद्योग टिकू शकले नाही आणि त्यामुळे दोन हजार सहा मध्ये एक विधेयक पास करण्यात आलं आणि त्यामध्ये सूक्ष्म लघु आणि मध्यम उद्योगासाठी एक स्वतंत्र मंत्रालय तयार करून दोन हजार सात मध्ये या उद्योगांना संजीवनी देण्याचा प्रयत्न सुरू करण्यात आला आणि त्यानंतर या उद्योगांनी भरारी घेतली यामध्ये वाढ होऊ लागली परंतु त्यानंतर परत काळ असा आला या अलीकडच्या दोन वर्षामध्ये जागतिक मंदी आली जागतिक मंदीमध्ये सर्व उत्पादनांचा खप होऊ लागला नाही उद्योग बंद पडू लागले आणि आता लॉकडाऊन लॉकडाऊन मुळे तर सर्व छोटे उद्योगच बंद पडलेले आहेत त्या व्यतिरिक्त जागतिकीकरणाचा धोरणाचा आता जो स्वीकार केला होता प्रत्येक देशांनी आपल्या नळ्या आवडल्या त्यांनी आपल्या देशातच लोकांना रोजगार देणं सुरू केलं नेशन फर्स्ट ची ही थीम समोर आली आणि त्यामुळे परत आपल्या उद्योगांचं महत्व वाढलं की आपल्या देशामध्ये जे उद्योग आहेत लघु आणि कुटीर उद्योग या उद्योगांना जर संजीवनी दिली यांना जर वेगवेगळे पॅकेज दिले तर आपल्या देशाचा विकास होऊ शकतो साधारणतः एकोणतीस ते तीस टक्के राष्ट्रीय उत्पन्न मांडला वाटा ह्या सूक्ष्म आणि लघु उद्योगांचा आहे या उद्योगांना प्रोत्साहन देण्यासाठी ज्या काही योजना तयार केलेल्या आहे त्यामध्ये स्किल इंडिया डिजिटल इंडिया आणि इतर भारत आत्मनिर्भर योजना अशा प्रकारच्या योजना अशा प्रकारचे पॅकेज काढून हे उद्योग पुढे कसे जातील यासाठी सतत प्रयत्नशील आपलं सरकार आहे राज्य सरकार आहे केंद्र सरकार आहे आणि या उद्योग यांनी जर याला जर आपण कमी पैशा कमी दरामध्ये कर्ज दिलं यांना सोयी सुविधा दिल्या दळणमुळाची साधने उपलब्ध करून दिली नवीन तंत्रज्ञान जर यांना उपलब्ध करून दिलं तर भविष्यामध्ये मोठ्या उद्योगाशी स्पर्धा करून विशेषतः ग्रामीण भागामध्ये सध्या जे मायग्रेशन आहे खेड शहराकडून लॉकडाऊन मुळे जास्त मॅक्झिमम लोक खेड्याकडे वळलेले आहे त्यांना रोजगार प्राप्त होईल उद्योगांना सुद्धा काही कुशल कामगार आहेत काही अकुशल कामगार आहेत हे सर्व कामगार स्वस्त दरामध्ये उपलब्ध होतील आणि त्यामुळे तो कच्चा माल आहे ग्रामीण भाग असल्यामुळे शेती आपली अर्थ शेती कृषी प्रधान अर्थव्यवस्था असल्यामुळे आपल्याला या लॉकडाऊनचा खूप मोठा भाग त्रास होणार नाही आणि त्यामुळे हे उद्योग अधिक भरारी घेतील आणि देशाची अर्थव्यवस्था बळकट करतील विकास दर जो आहे हा आठ ते दहा पर्सेंटच्या दरम्यान जर ठेवायचा असेल तर या लघु उद्योगांना पुढे आणणं गरजेचं आहे आणि अशा प्रकारे नवीन तंत्रज्ञान आणि त्यांच्यासाठी जर वेगवेगळे पॅकेज दिले तर देशाची अर्थव्यवस्था सुधारेल यामध्ये मात्र शंका मला वाटत नाही धन्यवाद and I have registered my PhD in Srinivas University, Mangalore. Now I am here to present a paper on post-pandemic office life, employees' views. So for the purpose of collecting the opinions of the employees, I have conducted a survey in uh, different organizations and uh, employees. So I feel happy to present a paper. As you all know, a pandemic is defined by WHO as an epidemic occurring worldwide or over a very wide area, crossing international boundaries and usually affecting a large number of people. Because this definition says many things. That is, the disease outbreak will be labeled as a pandemic when it is widespread in the one point, over several countries or continents, that is second point, and usually affecting a large number of people. So, what is the effect of that? There are so many factors and a combination of all the factors has led to a decline in the overall volume of global economic activity, forcing the world economy towards a possible recession. All sections of the society, including employers and employees, should play a role to protect themselves and each other and help prevent further spread of this disease. 
objectives of the study here the objectives are one to study the problems fear and anxieties the employees are facing second one to evaluate the expectations of employees in their office in post pandemic days third one is to study and analyze the measures an employer can implement in the office to make the employees free from tension and fear fourth objective is to know the expectations of employees from the employer to meet the emotional changes so with these objectives i have conducted a survey in different uh, uh, organizations means that is the survey by taking the opinions of the employees who are working in different organizations from clerks data entry i mean the employees uh, who are working in data entry department few were computer operators few were managers so working in different offices and here 50 employees are randomly selected in convenience sampling method a structured question and it prepared and distributed to them to take the opinion so as a primary data questionnaire survey is conducted and secondly personal interview so i have asked a few questions and collected the data as a secondary data i have referred few books and articles for the purpose of this study so now directly i will go to the data analysis part so this one is the table shows the opinion of the employees regarding their problems and the changes this um, table is a self explanatory look at this slide these are the questions asked and uh, these are the what uh, their responses see the first question is whether pandemic is causing fear and anxiety yes 80% of the employees responded as yes 20% responded as no no change in that so they took everything positively second how do you feel office life in post pandemic days only 20% responded as usual but 80% responded as unusual they are suffering so many problems there is a fear anxiety stress to go to the office and work in a normal way is there any change you felt in office 80% responded as yes 20% responded as no do you feel great changes in you of course 80% responded as yes 20% responded as no the second table shows the changes in employees like what type of changes in employees life according to their own uh, uh, opinion look at this table i got more opportunities to learn at home because there are so many technological inventions and innovations so many platforms to learn to communicate with others to know the updates in office etc i got more time to learn something new so 70% responded as yes 30% responded as no i realized my job is more comfortable at home than office majority of the responded uh, respondents uh, uh, gave their opinion as yes work life balance is improved due to reduced commitments daily they need not go to the office they can save that uh, traveling time i am more comfortable using technology now because continuously they try to to practice uh, how to use that technology to save the time to save the effort etc i have developed the social contacts more because every time they can discuss with the experts and the knowledgeable persons i get more time to spend with my family is yes, most of us got the advantage of this we got more time to spend with my family next one how do you feel while going back to your workplace what problems what is your expectation look at this table i feel worry about being close to employees yes if once you entered into the office anyway you have to 
exchange your things with other employees discussions exchange of opinions etc i would like to work remotely is they can make some alternative arrangements very difficult to build relationship with the colleagues 50% 50% see this table explains everything because uh, building relationship is possible normally but in few offices it is uh, somewhat uh, difficult in a small uh, office or organization uh, if uh, shifting arrangements are made okay so so uh, difficult to, to build relationship with colleagues then uh, they may face uh, some communication gap between the employees also next table see here uh, multiple responses are permitted what precautions do you want to take in office see here the question is asked whether they have some knowledge about the precautions to prevent covid 19 okay stop shaking hands with others 100% of the respondents are aware of that they agree with that then they said execute a plan to schedule few people in person meeting only few officers or employers and employees can conduct a meeting and communicate that uh, uh, result to the remaining people want to spend less time in common areas yes that can be followed reduce the number of in person meeting total number of meetings also can be avoided online meetings also can be conducted reduce the number of team building activities okay so these are the responses given by the employees the next question which of the following measures do you think your company needs to take in covid 19 pandemic so according to the employees point of view a company or the employer can take the following precautionary measures work from home opportunities can be given to the employees to some extent arrange better cleaning procedures in office conduct online meeting and training wearing mask can be made compulsory then make possible changes in the office layout also to maintain the distance next table says what do you expect from your employer because as i said there are so many physical and emotional problems and challenges we are facing now so we may expect some alternative arrangement in our office so employees opinion stay updated with notifications and directives in official website see if they are working at home always they expect uh, the what are the uh, to understand what are the changes taken place in their office because uh, of some fear or anxiety because they have to take some decisions in their working place then employer can take steps for promoting good workplace and hygienic workplace conduct awareness and training for precautionary measures to the employees because one employee one company may consists of so many Uh, types of employees so for the awareness purpose they can conduct uh, some training online then keep communication lines open always okay so according to my survey almost all i mean majority of the employees responded that employer can make alternative arrangements so we should behave properly and we always try to get knowledge about the prevention of covid 19 so these are my suggestions avoid non essential travel and then practice universal screening at the gate means at the entrance of the office or organization to keep a track of foreign rule restrictions and guidelines always it is better to study what is the rate of covid 19 in that particular area 
then better to prevent the employee to come to office if any symptoms of COVID-19. So treating them as human beings because in most of the offices today we are facing few difficulties, salary cut, demotions, then uh, what uh, termination, etc. So instead of that, some securities must be given to the employees. Then motivate the employees to work fear free environment. Okay, these are all the suggestions to prevent such uh, problems. So, to conclude, I can say that in the area of human resource management, one should consider the company's ability to adopt and encourage practices to improve employees' well being. Because uh, in small scale organizations, the more difficult to make uh, some alternative arrangements. Uh, but in large scale organizations, they can implement some systems. So now it is the responsibility of all to prevent COVID-19. So with this, I conclude and uh, I would like to thank uh, the Gondavana University and uh, Chintamani Mahavidyalaya to provide an opportunity to present the paper here. Thank you. HOD, Department of Education, Shoshana College, Kolkata, India. My topic is Attitude Towards COVID-19 Among College Teachers College, Kolkata, and Online Survey. The current pandemic is not only witnessing affecting the health of the citizens in the country, but at the same time, hindering various segment of the country too. From the teacher's viewpoint, the most immediate problem was observed is the temporary essence of face-to-face -face classes, which has left students perplexed in the completely new situation without any clear clarity, clarity as to when normalcy is achieved. In the present study, an attempt has been made to investigate the attitude towards COVID-19 of undergraduate college teachers. Objective of the study, two objectives. One, to assess the level of attitude about COVID-19. Second, to assess the effect of stream and gender on attitude about COVID-19. Methodology of the study, the design of the study based on online survey by the questionnaire are used to collect data and to analyze the quantitatively. The sample will be drawn stratified randomly from the population. The subject was chosen from the college teachers and sample number of sample 160 belonging to three different streams, arts, science, and commerce and both male and female. In a student, a 20 item attitude towards COVID-19 scale was used to measure the teacher's attitude toward COVID-19. There are 21 statements with five alternatives. I completely agree, I agree, I am undecided, I disagree, and I completely disagree and for negative statement, the scoring procedure was completely reversed. This online questionnaire headed by expert in measures and research was in the instrument of data collection and analyzed by employing quantitative research approach. Item related to attitude toward COVID-19 such as, do you believe that working from home can help control COVID-19? And do you think COVID-19 can cause massive fatality in what? Result and discussion. Table one, descriptive statistics concerning distribution of attitude towards COVID-19. The descriptive statistics in table one for attitude toward COVID-19, the score of mean, median mode shows an average performance ranging 81.31. In case of the attitude towards human rights, the score are more clustered. 
it is evident that scores the variable asymptotically distributed to read the score negatively skewed. Table two mean standard deviation of attitude towards COVID-19 regarding gender and state. Table shows that attitude towards COVID-19 score arts and female teachers is higher than male science commerce teachers. Table number three shows that there is no significant difference attitude towards COVID-19 score in the two groups, namely stream and gender. Conclusion. The arts and female teachers are more concerned with the attitude towards COVID-19 as quite a number of researchers have reported to it through finding of, of mixed nature. In this study, also female teacher respondents have disclosed their concern about subsequent positive attitude towards COVID-19 more than their female teacher counterparts. The research study is significant and has implication for the policy makers include the policy perspectives as the study will provide necessary input regarding essential government policy that need to be undertaken to encourage attitude towards COVID-19. Recommendation, college teachers should be encouraged to participate in committees on COVID-19 project program policies. Attitude of college teachers towards COVID-19 in human development and in relation to the protection of the society must be recognized and sustained. Limitation of the study. Limitation of the study is a small size of the sample, a sample from larger group, including there are other teachers and administrators who have given a broader perspective. The qualitative study of the research has not been included due to the diversity of time. It is required to undertake the relationship between the other variable in depth. Thank you for giving me a patient hearing. Any queries, please mail us. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Iram Fatima. I'm working as an assistant professor guest at Ramadan College of University of Delhi. is the impact of COVID-19 and lockdown. A study of various personality disorders found in people. So, uh, let's begin with introduction. So, uh, any infectious diseases are spread by either bacterial or viral agents and are ever present in society. Usually, infected cases are present in numbers below an expected threshold. But every once in a while, there may be an outbreak, a new strain or a new disease that has a significant impact at either a local or global level. So, there are three types of such diseases. Endemic, epidemic and pandemic. So, what is endemic? It describes a disease that is present permanently in a region or population. Then what is epidemic? It is an outbreak that affects many people at one time and has been spread through one or several communities. Then coming to pandemic, it is a term used to describe an epidemic when the spread is global. So a pandemic is derived from Greek pan, meaning all, and demos, meaning people. And it is a term used to describe the rapid spread of a transmissible infectious disease over several continents or worldwide. Once an epidemic becomes global and affects a large percent of the population, it becomes a pandemic. The term pandemic and epidemic are used to describe the rate and distance of the spread of the disease and not the severity of the disease. These are some features of pandemic. They affect a wider geographical area. They infect a very large number of people. They often cause, they are often caused by a new virus or a new strain of a virus that has been dominant for many years. Then they spread quickly in 
viewed as a little to no existing in minute then it can cause a high number of deaths then because of the need to control the spread of the disease there is often social disruption unrest and economic loss then coming to covid-19 so coronavirus disease that is covid-19 is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus on 31st december 2019 The virus was identified as a cause of a disease outbreak that originated in China, and since then, the virus has been infecting people and worldwide. In March 2020, the WHO declared the COVID-19 outbreak as pandemic. So there are some things about the mental status of various age groups. Although the season of lockdown seems quite easy to stay at home and continue work from home, but the Coronavirus disease and the lockdown together are actually creating several problems, leading to a drastic decline in the economy of countries. Moreover, it's also affecting the mental health of the people. Then there is some need for psychological immunity in times of pandemic such as COVID-19. Physical immunity has been deemed of utmost importance. The need for psychological immunity has been overlooked, even though it contributes immensely in the process of coping up with the disease. Pandemic and its psychological reaction. Psychological reactions to pandemics include maladaptive behaviors, emotional distress, and defensive responses. People who are prone to psychological problems are especially vulnerable. All of these features are clear evidence during the current COVID-19 pandemic. A study of 1,200 test respondents from 194 cities in China in January and February 2020 found out. That 51 percent of respondents rated the psychological impact of COVID-19 outbreak as moderate to severe. 29 percent report reported moderate to severe anxiety symptoms, and 17 percent reported moderate to, se- to severe depressive symptoms. So there are some several uh, personality disorders and impacts, and these are very much applicable on the people who are going through this emotional trauma. Of physical trauma of COVID-19, so personality disorders whose causes remain unknown are med- mental conditions that make individuals' behaviors towards situations differ from normal expectations. These conditions usually lead to stress and isolation. The American Psychiatric Association groups pers- personality disorders into three broad clusters on the basis of symptoms referred to as A, B, and C. So, cluster A. Which is suspicious. Paranoid personality disorder. People with the disorder tend to become suspicious of others' motives and actions. They stop trusting others. Then next one, cluster A is C. She is a personality disorder. People suffering from this disorder find it difficult to understand or take little interest in social signals, and thus might see emotionally shut off. Then. She is a type of personality disorder. In this disorder, people start to believe uh, to believe that they can influence others with their mind, which leads to misinterpretation. It interferes with their tendency of responding with appropriate emotions. Then comes cluster B, which is emotional and impulsive. This is a personality disorder. In this, people try to manipulate others and do not feel guilt for their actions. Then comes borderline personality disorder. In this, people feel lonely because of the support extended. Despite of the support extended towards them, they often feel paranoid and indulge in impulsive behavior. Then histrionic personality disorder. These people feed on attention and do not have the appetite for criticism. They are easily influenced by others. Then narcissistic personality disorder. People with this disorder do not empathize with others and believe that they should always be the center of attraction. They tend to think that they are more important than others. Then comes a cluster C, which includes anxious personality disorder. So these consist of certain types. First one is avoidant personality disorder. So they have lack of self worth and feel they feel inferior to others. Thus they try to avoid meeting new people. Then comes dependent personality disorder. These people depend on others to feed their emotional and physical needs. Then comes obsessive compulsive personality disorder. People with this disorder have obsession with perfection for things. They feel uncomfortable if things are not in order. Now coming to effects of lockdown. Many people find their everyday lives irrevocably changed by these physical measures as they find themselves needing to confine at home for a prolonged and unknown amount of time. Despite 
fight for safety concern practicing social distancing and self quarantine or the distressing person although these negative feelings and thoughts are universal an emotionally vulnerable group could be more substantially influenced by their emotional responses then one group of uh, the population is people with borderline personality disorder where their vulnerability is attributable to the underlying hyper responsiveness to stress compared with normal controls so now coming to the conclusion uh, coronavirus disease and covid-19 have affected people both physically and mentally all over the world but if we talk only about india it has majorly affected the people mentally because the indian economy is a labor intensive economy that is when your maximum population is dependent on labor working their daily life one of the most important factors here is that uh as it is a labor intensive economy most people are daily wage work uh, daily wage workers especially in the situation of lockdown the most affected part of the country are the daily wage workers because all the daily production and selling functions of the non essential items have stopped due to the lockdown only people working in factories and stores of fast moving consumer uh, goods with this, uh, in short known as uh, fbg have a proper daily earning and job security and uh, nobody ever imagined that a disease will harm the world population without harming anyone physically not only mental health it has destroyed almost every country's economy to a very large extent it's this economic impact has literally resulted in the destruction of mental health as when people stop earning they automatically get pushed backwards their professional life and when it will take a lot of time for the recovery and scenario and same for each and every country that's all i have to say about this thank you good morning to you all <coughs> i assistant professor <coughs> mamta ibadkar Shrimati Radha Mai Sarada College, Anjangao, Surji. Today I am present my paper. COVID-19 pandemic has changed education pattern in school and college. The COVID-19 has resulted in the school shut all across the world globally. Over 1.2 billion children are out of classroom. As a result, education has changed dramatically with the distinctive rise of e-learning, whereby teaching is undertaken remotely and on digital platforms. Research suggested that online learning has been shown to increase retention of information and take less time remaining. The changes coronavirus have caused might to be here to stay. why countries are the different points in their covid-19 infection rates worldwide there are the currently more than 1.2 billion children in 186 countries affected by the school closer due to the pandemic in denmark children up to age of 11 are returning the nurseries and school after initially closing after 12 march but in south korea the students are responding to role call from their teacher on with this sudden shift away from the classroom in many parts of the globe some are wondering whether the adoption adoption of online learning will continue to persist post pandemic and how such a shift would impact the worldwide education market even before the covid-19 there was already high growth and adoption in education technology with a globe it age investment teaching us in 18.66 billion in 2019 and overall market for online education projection to reach 350 billion by 2025 whether it is the language apps virtual tutorial video conferencing tool or online learning software 
there has been significant surge in uses since COVID-19. How is the education sector responding to COVID-19? In responses to significant demand, many online learning platforms are offering free access to their service, including platforms like Baijus, Bangalore based the educational technology and online tutorial forms foundation in 2011, which is how the world most highly valued EdTech company. Since announcing free live classes on this thing and learner, Baidu's has seen the 200% increase in the number of new students using its products. According to the Brinal Mohit, the company chief operating officer, Tansen Classroom, meanwhile, has been used extensively since mid-February after the Chinese government instructed the quarter of a billion full-time students to resume their studies through online platform. This resulted in the largest online movement in the history of education. With approximately 7,13,000 or 81% of KG1 to 12 students attending classes by the Tencent online school in Wuhan. Other companies are blustering capabilities to provide a one-stop shop for teachers and students. So such an education era is changed in COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you very much, one and all. Today, our two days interdisciplinary international e-conference on impact of COVID-19 on various areas of global economy, science, and humanities, organized on 24th and 25th June 2020, is completed. We have received a large and huge response from all over the world. Near about six to seven countries, delegates are joined and registered themselves in the online streaming. We also received near about more than 250 research papers. We received near about more than 140 presentations, which we willingly try to stream online, but there are some difficulties some people have sent their PPTs, some people have sent their uh, videos by Google Drive, but they have not given the access to them. So that's why we are very sorry if we have any type of flaw in our work system. I would like to thank you all who are still continuously attached and live with us. Thank you very much one and all. I would like to thank to my guides, Gondwana University, Gadchiruli, to my advisors, to my management, to my vice chancellor, to my guest resource persons from India and abroad. Also, I would like to thankful to organizing committee as well as I would like to thankful to those who have directly or indirectly contributed their efforts for this two days international conference. I would like to thankful to Dr. Professor Sachin Deshmukh, Mr. Nitin Uparwat, Dr. Ravi Dharapwar, Mr. Santosh Kumar Sharma, Dr. Sanjay Singh, Dr. Sheila Narwade, Dr. Parmanand Bhavankude, 
मिस्टर अविनाश चकिनार पवार मिस्टर गणेश सुरजुसे मिस्टर अंकुश गिरी डॉक्टर प्रवीण गुल्हाने डॉक्टर मेघा कुलकर्णी डॉक्टर पूर्णिमा मेश्राम डॉक्टर जे डब्ल्यू गबने डॉक्टर संघपाल नारनौरे मिस्टर डी डी विरुटकर प्रोफेसर डी डी विरुटकर मिस्टर निखिल राजलवार मिस्टर राजेंद्र डोनेवार एंड एंटायर टीचिंग एंड नॉन टीचिंग स्टाफ ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कॉलेजेस एंड यूनिवर्सिटी थैंक यू वी आर नथिंग विदाउट यू सो दैट्स वाई आई remember to the almighty authority god shiva and i would like to request you to remember and to spread the powers of humanity love peace and prosperity to the world and to the victims of covid 19 stay safe work hard and open the economy because this is the need of time thank you very much one and all we are going to conclude our session thank you very much thank you once again